Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVT News. Policy, the son of Mobe is my name and I hope I find you well wherever you might be. You know that uh, applications for ZEP permits are continuing. You know that application for waivers are continuing. Nothing has changed because we have been getting a number of calls and messages of worry from some holders of the ZEP asking us what they should do, especially after the ongoing court cases or in the midst of the ongoing court cases between uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Aaron Mutualeti, and the Helen Sussman Foundation and COMSA, that is the Consortium for Migrants and Refugees in South Africa, pertaining to the issue of the Zimbabwe exemption permit and the decision by the minister to cancel the permits or to discontinue the permits. But now, there is another question that has been asked a number of times about the letters, that is the four letters that I spoke about last time, that is letters from your employer making some undertakings. For example, the letter uh, where your employer is making an undertaking to facilitate your deportation, that of yourself as their employee and uh, your immediate family members or your immediate dependents. Uh, the letter also uh, of undertaking for them to uh, furnish the Department of Home Affairs with your change of status or if employment status or if you have stopped working for the particular company that got you the waiver as well as other two letters uh, the, where they have to undertake, that is for the third, that they will ensure that your passport is always up to date and that uh, if it has no longer been up to date for reasons known to yourself or your country, they will notify the Department of Home Affairs. And also, if uh, you have done something that is contrary or which is outside the requirements of your visa or the Immigration Act, they will also notify the Department of Home Affairs. So people have been asking how these letters should be structured and this is what we have decided to tackle for you so that you get to at least understand what your employer should write because there are some people whose employers don't even know what it is that they are supposed to write and they have been referring those people to us to say what is it? Is there an example? Or is there a formula? Or is there uh, any, uh, a way that this letter has to be structured? And this is what I want to talk about today. I will talk about the letter of undertaking on deportation. How should it be structured? But before I go ahead, I would like to request you to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you a full structure of this letter. Perhaps you can take a pen and paper and copy uh, this structure. Of course, it doesn't have to be verbatim. It doesn't have to be word for word, what I'm going to say, but this should give you an idea, a rough idea of what it is exactly that should be written then in your own words or in your employer's own words, because that is your employer who is supposed to write that. It's not you. So be very careful. Don't do it on your own. But your employer is the one who should write this. Or if they task somebody uh, at work to write this letter, as long as they are going to sign it, because these are letters that are going to be needed to be in uh, the letterhead of the company. They must affix a company letterhead. So this letter should be printed on a company letterhead with clear uh, contact details of the company, a letterhead of the company, phone numbers of the company, email address where there is, website where there is, as well as a signature of maybe the human resources officer or your supervisor or whoever is going to be answerable to the Department of Home Affairs when they come knocking, when they come calling or an office that is responsible for that is if it's human resources, regardless of whether the person who signs the letter now will still be in the company's employee, they will still have to answer for this because what they have to do is they write two letters, 
keep one, then give you the other for their record. They should keep one for their record so that when the department comes, they have this as a record. So I'm going to go through a letter of undertaking uh, for costs related to deportation. Then tomorrow I'll go to the next letter, the following day to the next letter until all four uh, are done. So as I have said, the letter must be in on a company letterhead. It must have a, uh, the company contact details. It must have uh, the phone numbers, the physical address of the company. It must have a date on which the letter was written. Then it must be directed to the Department of Home Affairs. That is the Director General of the Department of Home Affairs in Pretoria, South Africa. If you are based in Houghton or wherever you are based, you write it. But of course, it can all be written to the Pretoria office because that is where the Director General is. So it has to be written to the Director General of the Department of Home Affairs in Pretoria, South Africa. And the reference, that is the subject line, must be clearly about the particular letter. For example, this one, as I have already promised, uh, is a letter uh, of undertaking for costs related to the deportation. So the letter has to be written on the subject, ref uh, undertaking for cost related to deportation of Mkoli Singube, then have my passport number there. Then, because this letter is going to be written by either your human resources manager or your employer, it has to go like this, I, so and so, that is the name of the human resources officer, or the name of your employer or whoever has been tasked by the company or the person that you work for to write that letter. Uh, the human resources manager or employer or what, what at AVG News hereby provide this undertaking to the Department of Home Affairs accepting full responsibility for the costs associated with the deportation of our employee Nkodisi Ngube and his dependent family members should it be deemed necessary by the relevant authorities. We understand and acknowledge our obligation to cover all expenses related to the deportation process, including but not limited to transportation, accommodation, legal fees, and any other costs incurred during the deportation proceedings. In the event that Nube and his dependent family members are required to be deported, we commit to promptly and willingly cooperate with the Department of Home Affairs and its officials to facilitate the process. We assure you that our company will take all necessary measures to ensure the compliance of our employee and his dependents with any immigration regulations and requirements. Furthermore, we undertake to notify the Department of Home Affairs immediately in case of any changes in Nobis immigration status or employment with our company and we will provide any information or documentation necessary for the proper administration of immigration matters. This undertaking is valid from the date of its issuance and remains in effect until the determination of Nobis employment with AVG News or until otherwise notified by the Department of Home Affairs. We appreciate your attention to this matter and are committed to upholding laws and regulations governing immigration. Yours sincerely, Nkoli Sinube, Managing Editor, AVG News, telephone number or mobile number 073-962-3075. So that's an example. Uh, it's not uh, the model, the correct, I mean, is not supposed to be written exactly in those words, but it can for those who are lazy to think outside the box without insulting you, of course. Uh, for those that think that may, they may, at the end of the day, run out of words as to what they should write, you can write it as it is, but this must be something that your company, if you're the human resources officer, commits to because it cannot be. Uh, just a, a letter that becomes an ornament for you to get this uh, waiver or permit or visa. And then at the end of the day, it's not followed. So 
this is not for those that are uh, applying for waivers, but for those that have been uh, granted the waivers and they are now moving on to the payment stage of their application. So I hope that you will put this to good use. I will come back tomorrow with another letter. But remember, these are four letters that are supposed to be done differently. Let me say separately, all under the company letterhead signed by whoever has been tasked by the company to sign or signed by your employer. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.